Hana. <laughs> my fake, how are you? How are you doing, I'm sweetheart? okay. I've had a good week, guys. My last week at work. How do we feel? Oh, so happy. I was so happy today, writing, writing my hand over. Isn't it so like good that you can just live off podcast money now? Look at her, no, she's guys. quit her job, I'm next. <laughs> Moving on swiftly. Guys, I'm actually really happy. Um, yeah, I'm How excited. do you feel about, like, well, how do you feel about the concept of basically just, like... Relinquishing all responsibility. So I was going to say sh shaming everyone in the exit interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the person that was supposed to do the exit interview has um, coincidentally gone on leave for one month, so I don't think I'll be doing an exit interview. The little buggers. It, to me, it seems very... Coincidental. But you know what? I just want to leave in peace. And you and will. prosperity. Inshallah. Guys, it was Grammy last week. No, last Grammys night. last night. And uh, my, my mother. What? The one and only. Beyonce. Absolutely not. Who's my other mother? Taylor Bloody Swift. Is having a new album on the 19th of April, and apparently this one. Can, before we go into the new album, how do you feel about her winning album of the year? And do you <laughs> think she snubbed Celine Dion? No, I don't think she did. I think she was just excited. Also, there was um, a picture of them backstage afterwards and they were hugging. Word on the road is, Taylor's got beef with Celine Dion. <laughs> I'm joking. We're well, grasping at straws here, darling. What do you think of Jay Z's um, outburst? Um, I liked it. Also, I just feel like it was Kanye, but more carefully articulated better. Yeah, it was like Kanye, but with better. He was calmer. He was calmer, more humorous, and like the the digs were like under. It was. It was less. I would say it was less erratic. Indeed. Right. But I mean, the Grammys have always had issues with, I mean, rap album of the year is never even in the main show. It's where all culture comes from, let's be real. Music way, like influence, yeah. street wear, just the vibe, the riz of it all. So it's a bit, it's a little bit sad that it's not in the main show. Yeah, what but you know, we, we had, there, there were quite a lot of wins. Did you see Scissors win when she was running? <laughs> yeah, that was so that cute. Was cute. Who and else won? Dad run Tyler. Running. Tyler, or is it Water? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it Water? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see this song, it's always like Water Tyler, Tyler Water, Tyler, and, and I never know which Water. one's her name. Oh my god, I sound like Georgia Steele not knowing people's yeah. names. That's Can we terrible. just talk about Georgia Steele for a second? Georgia Last night's video. Steele. If you guys don't listen to Love Island, skip this bit. But if you do, this is going to be fun. Last night's PDA. First of all, Callum and Molly, come on, you both want each other. Let's just get back together now. Yeah, I think now is the over. time to start rekindling things. You know what killed me is when Georgia mentioned Shauna. <laughs> I wanted the I ground to swallow her up because it was just random. Oh, like, huh? like, yeah, but you brought Molly back from Casa and Molly. And then Kaz's face was like, I was like, Shauna's got a baby. She's moved on. She's probably on the sofa watching this and, and seeing her name mentioned. And then Molly's like, we've been together for three years. What's more history than that? <laughs> Georgia. Oh Georgia was her. like, you know when the straws are like... She's she was grasping. Like, she was like clutching hard. She was trying her very best to have a storyline in that moment. It's not even the storyline. Just You got caught lying. Yeah, like she was just doing back and forth. It was a lot of gaslighting. And then you know, what, you know what made me laugh was Toby trying to stick up for her. And then Arabella chimes in and was like, bitch, sit down. <laughs> I secretly feel like the producers told told Toby to do that. Because it just came out of nowhere. It was like very disingenuous. It didn't seem like he wanted to do that. It was and like he... And it, he's never done that before, like to just yeah, randomly snub someone like it that. Fe it felt like he was... Um, he was orchestrated. Under, under duress, yes. even. They told him to do that. I just feel like in all the time, he's been in three seasons now. The games, this one, and the Chloe season. He's, ne I mean, he's been messy, but not that messy. Yeah. Not to talk to someone, that's a bit deep. No, Toby's behavior though, even p picking Georgia to couple up with is like, I feel like it was quite strategic because he obviously saw that Georgia and Callum came second in top two favourite couples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so so he must have been thinking, right, I'm not getting anywhere with Arabella. I need to be in the favourite. Let me I get Georgia be back. In, mm, they'll be in the topics all the time. Yeah. But then this is the thing. Like, if they if people vote Georgia out, it's going to be a very anymore, boring yeah. show, isn't it? I don't it? think they will. I hope they don't, because I love 
her. I love to hate her. You know what I found funny? You know when her and Toby were sitting together and he was like to her, what are you going for? for? She said my long hair. She's so toxic. Before her family. She was like my long hair. And then it was something else to do with her looks. And then she was like my family. It was, she's just I was like, terrible. Georgia, what the hell? I don't know but like, if she's got a screw loose. I really don't understand. People keep saying she's a bit narcissistic, but you know. But yeah, what Galada was saying about her weaponizing her, you know, it's like this angelic, dainty, like white girl archetype. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I can do no wrong, but I can say whatever the hell I want and do whatever I want without getting reprimanded for it. Also, she weaponizes her tears quite a lot as well. Mm. She does a lot of crying, but there's no actual tears coming out. And also another thing she does, which I I think is like a very, okay, it's a bad skill to have, but just the way she does it is amazing. It's the deflecting. So like someone will catch her out on something and then she'll pinpoint something else and then that will become the topic of the whole conversation. I was like, damn, this girl's got skills. Is that not gaslighting? Yeah. That's like, yeah. Gas- <laughs> I think she's gaslighting. You like her for her gaslighting. No, but she does it so well, like you don't even realise she's doing she's it. Good. Suddenly I'm more engrossed in bloody, I don't know, some other story that she's talking about when I, and I've forgotten the original thing that she's been called out for. She she's really good at minimizing what she did to Callum. Yeah. And I feel like Callum, he's sticking up for himself, but I feel like he's not he's not as articulate as Molly. Like, I feel like Molly, in that one sit down that they had with each other, she really triggered her. Yeah. Like, Georgia was triggered. Yeah. Whereas with Callum, I feel like he's just not on that wavelength with yeah, her. Like, he's not, he's not say, quick no. with the words. He doesn't construct the sentences no. quickly. He hasn't got the So she gets clap away backs. with that. Exactly. So she gets away with it with yeah. him. But with Molly, zoom, she shuts her up quickly. Anyway, moving on. If you've been enjoying this episode so far, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, download the episode, give us five stars on the Spotify, leave us a message in the comment box and also give us a review on the Apple podcast. Thank you. We love you. And some other cute updates. Guys, we have a sold out event. Remember, I think last year, not even last year, I think the last two years we've been alluding to doing speed friendships. And the event sold out. So we're going to be doing paint and sip on the 17th of February. Loads of you are asking for extra tickets. I don't even think we can because of the capacity. But it's okay, guys. Watch the space for more events because we're going to have, you know, ba- based on the success of this trial. Let's see how we do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's see if the girlies like it. And if you do, we're going to have more events. It's going to, be, it's going to work out well. Um, oh my but- God, why have, how have we not spoken about what we got up to this weekend? <laughs> Guys, we met the most litest girls in Saviv on the weekend. And guess what? We met them the following day, <laughs> the following evening at the Iskafil and Gala. And they were so fun. Like, I've never seen, like, a group of girls with more energy. I thought we were crazy. I just enjoyed being around them. Like, my <laughs> energy so levels happy. were, like, up. My dopamine, everything was just... Blah, 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 blah. I just loved it. No, they were so happy and just so funny. Like, the whole experience was fun. I'm not gonna lie. I loved it. But the weekend was chaotic. I yeah, know. it was just a mess. It was, it was messy. Yeah, like we, me and Hawtha just, we did a double event in one night. We had our cousin's graduation, then we went somewhere else. That never happens because me and her are just we, old We just ladies. get tired, yeah. And we get tired when But this time sleep. we're in the car and we're like, you know what, should we just do it? Should do we just, it. Should should we do just it. swing by? And it wasn't <laughs> even that far away. Anyway, we turned up and we just had a great time. To all the listeners that we met at the Skuffle and Gala, Thank you so much. You for, guys were so fun. Like, you guys are f***ing amazing. I met so many people. Some of you were like, I sent scenarios. We were giggling about that. It was so much fun. Yeah, no, you guys are vibes. It was honestly. just so nice to meet you all, honestly. Also, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon. The Patreon's live. The Patreon is live. <laughs> like, five scenarios now, which are all bloody <laughs> juicy. Last week's one was a tearjerker. I couldn't stop thinking about that the rest of the week. So I'm actually going to go and listen to the Patreon episode when I go home tonight. The and girls I'm... actually replied to our email. Did you know oh, that? did she? Yeah, she replied and she was just really sweet, bless her. And she's just living her best life now. And I'm so happy for her. We're happy that you've healed. Honestly, that story really got to me last week. I know. Um, and then what else was I going to say? And also, Amsterdam show, still a few tickets left, guys. Let's do this. March 2nd, it's going to be amazing. So if you want to get your tickets, make sure you get on the link of the bio. Monday Madness, guys. Let's dive in. Told my family my wedding venue fits 70 people, but it actually fits 200 plus. Surprise. <laughs> So what is she going to do? Just invite their people? (laughs) (laughs) So I think 70 is like what her parents and family, you know, the older lot. 
And then she's got, what's 200 takeaway 70? Quick maths. She's got 130 of her nearest and dearest close girlfriends that she, she's got invitations for. That's sick. You smart. That's actually so smart. You smart. So she basically. But I'm just saying, just generally speaking, Somali mothers are very nosy. They will go to that venue and ask for more. I don't think she's Somali. Then it works out. That's actually really smart. They won't go to the venue and ask for more. That's so yeah, disrespectful. That's no, really? Somali mums are out there. Oh my god, that is actually distasteful. Really? Yeah. What? Well, going to a venue and asking for more tickets? As. Oh, I thought you meant like some random auntie. No, I'm saying your mum, like not you, uh, but like the person's bride's mum. Sorry, I was just really shocked. True. For a mo- yeah, I was thinking sorry. about random aunties that didn't get an invite are going to the venue saying, give me an invitation. It Imagine would, that. Probably would happen. No, come on, <laughs> Probably would happen. <laughs> that each kid was my favourite. Do you do that? Sometimes. Do you say that? You, do you actually have a favourite child? Depends on the season. <laughs> Depends on who's being the nicest. Who's always been the, I know who your favourite child is. I'm not saying anything, that's up to you, love. <laughs> I can just tell by the way she looks at there. You know I'm telling the truth. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, guys, I'm joking. Maybe, I'm but carry on. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they're like little humans. <laughs> Sometimes you like one more than the other. It doesn't it mean you happens. don't love them less. Telling my mum Mel Ahmed studies ended late, but really I went out every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, some of you can definitely relate to that. One. Vibes, vibes, vibes. If you can get away with lies. I oh, know. You know what's friends. so crazy about lies when you're young? They don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. Mm-mm. It's like I'm just trying to get out of the strict parenting situation that I'm in. I need to. I need to live. <laughs> I'm just saying, girls that have immigrant parents who are strict are the best liars in the world. 100%. We get away with so much. With finesse. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing. No, it's an absolutely bad thing. It's a horrible thing. Like, looking back now, I don't think I would tell the many lies that I told when I was younger today. Valid. Yeah. You grow out of lying. (laughs) We do. So if you're a compulsive liar, there's hope for you yet. If you've got a booming social life and you've got a strict parent, put the those two, two together. The two don't go well. It together. equals lies. There's no other way you're going to have that social life. You know, it's really hard, isn't it's really it? Hard. Like, how can you be honest with your parent and just be like, Mum, like, I just want in our a lot. I just want to go out. She'll just look at you like, you ain't going nowhere, you little slag. <laughs> <laughs> All that, that's what they're saying. Sura, isn't it? And they'll just look at you sideways. Like, you want to go out? To our non-Somali speaking listeners, Surafad means, oh my God, it's like Hurguf again. How can I say <laughs> Surafad? <laughs> Surafad is, is like, like, you're like on the street. No, like you're just, on, you're that girl that's always on the street. Okay, Surafad is basically just someone who likes to be outside. Yeah, you just like to be on the street. She's a city girl. Just living your best life. Basically. Convinced Hoya my Ajinabi sneaky link was just an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> that is so smart. That's actually very clever. But then what if your mum can never think of that? Why have you got the same Uber driver? That's what I'm saying. What if your mum just sees the same person every time? Obviously she's gonna clock, like. If she's sitting at the front, that's too close. Yeah, because no one sits at and the also, front. And also, why would you now coming from a household with a strict mother, if I was coming out of a car. That's not coming outside my house. I'm so sorry. No, I'm she's saying it's the an Uber ra- driver. No, but still. Really? I'd tell the Uber driver come straight no, outside No, Uber house. driver, that's fine. But I'm saying if it's the same Uber driver, your mum's not dumb, she's going to clock. No, of course. This, this is not going to work in the long run. If she keeps seeing I would the be same like car with the same man in the flipping driver's seat. I'd be like getting off a road ahead. I'm like, drop me here. That's, I mean, it, yeah. Logically, that would be smart. Yeah, no, no, the car, the car cannot come anywhere no. near the house. You've got to be dropped off at least like 500 meters out. <laughs> Literally. But then again, the neighbors could see you. That's but true. But then you could tell them that it's an Uber driver. But then they're gonna keep seeing the same car. Like, it's no, but then it's work. less likely for the neighbors to recognize the same car than your mum. Of course, but I'm just saying, if you have, because everyone has that one nosy neighbor that snitches on you, like, come on. 
Everybody has a nosy neighbor. It depends on the car as well. That is basically. If it's a silver Prius, it's not, I'm sorry, you can't clock that. But if it's a red Nissan, of course, the car needs to be incognito. Yeah. Oh my God, we're helping her lie. That Maya Jama was my aunt and my non-Somali friend believed it. <laughs> How about your Maya? <laughs> Maya is my cousin. She's my first cousin. Kiltona, you her first cousin. I don't see it, but sometimes like, I'll see an image of her and I'll be like, damn. No, shall I tell you how Kultorn looks like Maya Jama? Kultorn, go like this. It's this area. Yeah. <laughs> Can we accept that Somalis just look like each other? That's because, a valid point. Because That's every true. friendship group probably has a, a Maya Jama lookalike. Like, let's be real, the chances valid, are very valid. high because Maya Jama looks very Somali. Valid, valid, valid. But wait, who's this wedding planner? Someone once said sh she Shanice Shanice Fudge. I don't know how to say her name. Oh, look Ooh. at you. Do you? Yeah. Damn. Cause you just got a chameleon yeah. face. I love this for you. Every Halloween, I could do a makeup look and look like a different person. I agree. Yeah. And it would look like wow, the, the the resemblance is uncanny. Me and my bestie told this girl that my bestie had a random thing called titanitis. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that an actual thing? That with where your ears ring. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's called something else. Titanitis. Oh, they're making up something. They felt like they were making up something. It was an actual thing. I thought they were referring to breasts, but then I, I just when I said the word out loud, it sounds like it's like an ear infection. The ear right? infection. Yeah. When dating, I told him he was my first kiss. We are married now. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's, it's a little white lie. <laughs> I told a girl she's my best friend, even though she wasn't. Oh, that's okay. not nice. Sorry, what can we do? I feel like it's gonna cause more problems to say she's not her best friend. She can't say it now, she's already said she's her best friend. But if someone says to you, are you my best friend? Are you gonna say no to them? That's I'm gonna say mean. I have a lot of good friends. You could easily get past that question. I've got loads of good friends and you are one of them. During COVID, I aired my Duxi Ma Allen and told my mum I'd been passing seven months in brackets. Yes, that's it guys. That's that's Monday Madness. Not, it's not a good one this week, is it? You have to do better, ladies. I'm so sorry. Maybe our question was a bit shit. Maybe our answers were a bit shit. We'll never know, but that was a terrible Monday. <laughs> I ignored my husband so much that he went away without telling me. Oh my God. Damn, what'd you do, girl? So she goes, I, Carla, 30, I'm six months pregnant with mine and my husband, Harry, 31's first child. During this pregnancy, I've been very exhausted every day and would usually come home from work and go to bed an hour later. And then I'd wake up at midnight and reheat what Harry had made us for dinner. For a context, I've been a part of a huge work project that's been going on for months and I've been extremely overworked. On top of this, my husband doesn't have a job at this moment and isn't looking for one unless I remind him. I've been working overtime to get as much money as I can before maternity leave. Okay. Our anniversary was on the 6th of August and I'd asked him if we could have a romantic dinner at home and then snuggle up to watch TV under a warm blanket. I thought it was a wonderful idea since I was too tired to go out because I knew that Harry was doing the most, if not all of the household chores. Mm. However, he seemed a little annoyed when he agreed, but I thought nothing of it. She goes, the next morning, Harry seemed quite cold towards me, barely looked at me. Once I got home from work, he wasn't there. But that was not, she was like, but that was the normal since he had been out with his friends or he was at an interview, so I went to sleep. She goes, I woke up at 11 that night to see that I was still alone in the house, so I checked my phone and I had eight missed calls from Harry and a long text. What, all because of the anniversary suggestion? Are you having a laugh? I feel like she did him a bloody favour. She didn't ask to go out for some lavish meal. She said, let's stay in and cuddle up. What's, what's he playing at? I thought maybe it's because she told him to clean up. I don't know. But anyway, she goes, I'm summarizing, but the text read, I understand how tired you are because of this pregnancy and you have to work extra hours most days, but I'm over being ignored every day <laughs> and, having, <laughs> and having a five minute conversation with you ever so often. You expect me to do all the housework and plan our boring anniversary alone. I'm really annoyed, so I'm staying at my friend's tonight. Oh dear. Text me when you see. Text me when you see this. 
<laughs> so he thought it was a boring anniversary because I thought it was boring as well. But she's tired. She's no, no, I get it. I get why she suggested it though. But bloody hell, for him to say it's boring is a bit of a stretch because. I mean, anyway, so she goes, of course I called him and texted him. Why isn't he planning the anniversary dinner? What the hell? So many questions. <laughs> so she goes, of course I called him and texted him about being sorry and wanting to talk. But she goes, I never got an answer in the morning. I called my boss about having a day off and spent most of the wait waiting for Harry and planning my apology. Where the hell's Harry? However, when he came home, he silently handed me a rose and a card saying that he loves me, but he needs a few days away for him to figure out what he's gonna say or do. Harry's on his periods. Harry's PMSing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this happened on the 13th, eight days later. So a whole week, basically. She goes, I messaged him every day and he would constantly say that he needed one more day or just another night at his friends to figure this all out. But on the 13th, I decided to go to the friend's home he was staying at to confront him. Mm -hmm. So I drove over nearly 30 minutes, banged on the door so hard that I could hear it echo from the inside. But at this point, I realized that I should have put more effort into our relationship. But he also should have talked to me about about this instead of running away. She goes, Harry's friend came to the door. I was confused, but pleased to see me. He seemed a little on edge <laughs> as I talked He's to like, him. He's like, come get this man out of my house. <laughs> Literally. She goes, he seemed a little on edge as I talked to him and he had to break the silence ever so often with comments about my pregnancy and how he couldn't wait to meet the baby. Finally, we stopped talking and I practically demanded to see Harry, saying that I wanted to apologize, but also explain how childish he was being from hiding from me. The thing that I found out was absolutely hilarious. Oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> she goes, the thing that I found out was absolutely hilarious, but actually not at all. What was happening was that his friend said that Harry wasn't there and he had left for Ireland on the 9th so on the ninth day, he left to go to Ireland. What? She goes, Ireland? To say that I was absolutely beyond furious and extremely confused would be such an understatement. She goes, his friend invited me in and sat me down to talk. Turns out Harry had told his friend our problems and had come up with the solution of going on a holiday <laughs> as a couple to sort everything out and learn to love each other again, in Harry's words. So of course his friend thought that this was a lovely idea and helped him book the flight. Well, for the both of them. Listen, he helped him book the flight on that evening of the 5th, the first time he stayed at his friend's house. Since it was last minute booking, Harry's friend had stayed with him for quite a while before they found a flight, which was taking a few more passengers due to cancellation. His friend then explained how he'd been confused when I arrived at the door, but didn't want to say anything about the holiday in case it had ended early due to us arguing. Harry's return ticket is booked for the 20th of August, and I'm just so angry and quite heartbroken to be completely completely honest. She goes, I messaged him and Harry only responded an hour ago and nothing more and just said, I had to figure things out, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but it's funny. So she's from the UK. So, yeah, just to give you guys so Harry's context. just up and left. He said, I don't wanna do no housework. I don't care that you're pregnant. I just need a break from all of this. I mean, if he just communicated that a bit better and then went on his holiday, I think it would have been fine. All these men taking holidays. When shit hits the fan. And what, she's six months pregnant? The cheek of it. it just Over what? An anniversary dinner? I and telling I think him he to was wash upset. up? Yeah, I think he was upset more about like the expectation that he was the cleaner. But also yeah, but like- You're not working, you're but, at home and you're not looking for a job, what do you expect? But also it's just, it's really funny like that he's throwing his toys out the pram over that. When he could have just sat down with her and said, oh, like, I just don't like to be treated this way. Harry's so funny. He got his friend to book him a ticket to Ireland. Why didn't he book it himself? Because he's got no money. Oh, because he's a house husband. <laughs> oh, my God. So he lied to his friend and said that we're going to go on holiday together to sort out our problems. And he's only gone on and effed off to go to Ireland. Harry's actually hilarious. Just to teach her a lesson, to, to, to show more affection. I just, I don't know what his game plan is. I don't understand. I don't know what he wants to get from this. Because when maybe, he comes back, obviously his wife's just going to be looking at him like, like. Maybe this is a sabotage to end the relationship. No, don't. Come on. He's maybe this is way, the way. Maybe this is a way for him to run away without saying that he's running away. Do you think he's going to come back? 
Harry's living his best life in Ireland, love. He ain't coming back. Maybe if the money runs out. He might, like, I think he's probably feeling a little bit downtrodden because he's unemployed, he's at home, he's doing the at-home duties. Also, on top of that, there's the pressure of a heavily pregnant wife. Maybe everything's just getting to him and he's like, I need some time alone for a bit and I'm going to come back when I'm recharged and re-energised. But he just didn't know how to communicate that to his wife. That's what I suspect. That's me being... I think that's a great breakdown. Mm. But Harry's still messaging his wife saying, I still need to think about things and not telling her that he's in Ireland. And then he made her think that he's at his friend's house. Yeah, it's a bit weird. And she's six months pregnant he's made her worried. I mean, obviously there are some parts to the story, Hother, that don't quite make sense. <laughs> he he, so his friend booked them too, but he just took the ticket and left. It's just, just like... What's Harry playing at? I just want to know what Harry's up. Did he come back from Ireland? What happened, Harry? Like, what's going on? Have you fixed it? It's your first baby. You've got to be there. Yeah, I just think it's all getting to him. He doesn't know what to do. Harry, and it's an online world. You can easily get a job online, a little remote job. Come on now. Yeah, but you know, you've got to get the. You know, sometimes, yeah, and I really do think about this. Like, men have a lot of pressure when it comes to families. I don't. I know you don't want to hear this right now, but essentially... Why don't I want to hear <laughs> it? Because you just thought a guy like this. No, <laughs> I just don't think Harry's pulling no. his weight. No, he's not pulling his weight, but just think about it. Like, generally, men do have a lot of pressure when it comes to families, like, they're the leaders. Do you know what I mean? So when they don't have a job or they're not being able to provide what they're supposed to do, it's just going to, like... I think it's very, it's, I think it's detrimental to their mental health, if anything. Like, like they've got a massive pressure. He's got a wife, a baby on the way, and he doesn't have a job. Like, can you imagine how fucking diminishing that must be as a man? I mean, I completely agree with all of that, but I'm just saying what she said. Mm. It's also two sides to every story. That's very true. Absolutely. But the way Carla explained it, it's not, it's not doing anything active to look for a job. Yeah, well, she didn't really say he's doing anything, did she? She says she constantly reminds him to look for a job. She's gotten too comfortable. And you know what? He might be struggling with his mental health. He might not be able to get out of the funk that he's in. But also, mm. you've decided to procreate. So, mm. you've just got to... Um, what's that thing that we say? Just a bit sad, isn't it? Because obviously, you've got a pregnant woman who's doing work in, you know, way more than she should. She'd be, she should be putting her feet up, if anything. But also, like that's just I, such a like weird little <laughs> contrast. It's a weird contrast, but also I feel like um, if sh if their relationship was always like this, then I can understand his frustration. But if she's now pregnant and like she's tired all the time and she's not putting in the same effort that she used to do in the relationship, I think he should cut her some slack. Come on. No, but absolutely. I just honestly, he's being very selfish right now because he's the one with all the time. But. Um, What's Harry gonna do? Come back in nine months when the baby. It's just here. weird. I don't know how to think. I don't know how to like think about this because you know what? Like, really and truly, it should be basically Harry working and and his wife at home relaxing and doing all the extra bits. Do you know what I mean? And supporting him that way. But it's just weird. Like the whole thing is just backwards. And I know there's some families that live like that have those kind of arrangements and stuff. Like I get it, but it's just weird for me to put myself in either of their shoes because this is not a dynamic that I'm used to like seeing. Yeah, I think if it works for them, it works for them. I just think Harry... He c I think he's doing what he can with like the limited resources that he has, but... But I think it's the reaction. Yeah, he's d he just doesn't know how to communicate, basically. And then the reaction's quite scary because every time something happens to you guys, are you gonna run away to Ireland? Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of explaining to do when he does come back, do you know what I mean? Also, he could have just planned the anniversary. It's not nice to leave someone in the lurch when they are pregnant. That's mean. Yeah. But we hope you get through it, Harry. It's just I'm exhausted, I'm on my period. Are you the actually? energy is just getting yeah, sucked out of me. Is. It's all right, guys, you know what? This is, na this is natural, it's what we all go through. Next week, I'll be happy. What is the luteal phase? Luteal? Yeah. Isn't that from science? Yeah. From like GCSEs? Yeah. Okay, but wait, you've got to give me what topic it was it on? Was it on ovaries and that? Yeah. Luteal phase. It's like a period phase, isn't it? It's 
the it's the peer it's the part before your period where you're the bitchiest. Oh, that was me last week. But I wasn't bitchy last week. I think I had good energy last week. Anyway, oversharing. Hello, I recently found out that I was pregnant. My husband and I are very excited as this will be our first baby. Love that for you. Went to the OB. I'm 10 weeks along and the doctor says the baby and I are doing very well. I told my co-workers at the office that I'm expecting and everyone was excited for me and some of the ladies want to plan a baby shower for me. They're actually really sweet. I know, co-workers planning a baby shower, not in England. Absolutely <laughs> not. They must be in sunny Australia. I'm overwhelmed by all their kindness. However, there was one girl who pulled me aside. We'll call her Abby. Abby is 23, she just graduated and has a tendency to overstep. When she pulled me aside, she told me I shouldn't go through with the pregnancy because A, this job doesn't pay us well, my salary is pretty decent, so is my husband's, and B, climate change. And C, I'm part black and doctors kill black women. She went on about how doctors are to black women what police are to black men. And while I understand that sentiment and I have read the data on black women in the American health system, I'm talking to my doctor to make sure my pregnancy is safe for me and my baby. Abby kept pushing and said, you will die if you have this baby. Uh What is she? She kept... What the hell? How do you know? (laughs) What the hell? She kept pushing, so I went to HR and they talked to her. Imagine someone coming up to you. You're going to die if you have this baby. How horrible. HR is doing an investigation and Abby is telling everyone in the office that she was just stating facts and is trying to save my life. Oh, I mean, is Abby autistic? No, because you know, no, I'm not even taking the piss, but you know people that have are on the spectrum, they're quite literal. Mm. So like they say the third, first thing that comes to mind without really thinking. The first about thing the that comes to their mind, but also they take situations literally. Like the idea that we know black and BME women are four times or is it five times more likely to die from childbirth because of neglect from doctors. Mm. But she's taking that literally. So now to physically say that to her and be like, You will die if you have this baby. Do you know what I mean? There's a nuance to it. Like you can have, you can know the facts about something, but she also be empathetic. Be like, she might just be socially awkward and doesn't know how to say it in an empathetic way. So HR is doing an investigation and Abby is telling everyone in the office that she was just stating facts and is trying to save my life. And I'm the selfish one for trying to have a baby while everyone is poor and the planet is dying. She's trying to twist what she said to make herself look good and I'm just so upset. I know HR will handle it, but I just need to get this off my chest. Thank you for reading my rant. It's such an awkward thing to say to someone. It's just so random, isn't it? Like, imagine someone coming up to you and saying, don't have this baby. You will die. You will die if you have this baby. That would make me really paranoid. But her reasons, I can understand why she's saying it because she, she, she's thinking about her well-being. Mm. But also this seems like a very educated woman and I feel like she should be very much in control of like being in the doctor and... Mm. Like planning her pregnancy. Planning her pregnancy, but also having someone to advocate for her. Yeah. So I it's mean, an awkward thing to say to a coworker though. Like that's weird. Abby's 23, she's probably just graduated, do you know what I mean? Because you know when you're at uni, you're a proper social activist, like just a warrior. And she probably got employed, this might be her first job. <laughs> she sees a pregnant woman. I mean, like, this isn't... This, this is isn't, so far-fetched. This is very uncommon, I'm not going to lie. This is just how I'm trying to, like, think about, like, how Abby can... How to justify what Abby said. Maybe she's just, you know... One of those protest babies that went to uni and did the most. Do you know what I mean? She could be like a very advocate person. Yeah, she could be but like. You've got to understand social cues. You can't just come up to someone and be like, "No, of course." No, but I there know are, you're pregnant. There are but, a lot know, of like young. There's a people. lot of kids on this planet. You know, climate change. You can't be bringing someone else. But into you know, that. there's like a lot of young people that like to like say things to make other people feel uncomfortable in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Just because of their youth, they don't understand this is a very weird conversation, but they'll just say it because frontal lobe perhaps hasn't developed. 
She's two years from frontal lobe developing. She I know, well, it's clearly not developed, has it? Oh, she's no. not young, though. She's going around telling pregnant if, women they're going to die. No, so. but she's not young. Stop making excuses for her. She's 23 years old. That's an adult. She's socially awkward and she doesn't know how to speak to a co worker. There's but just I some can't 23 year olds she's, that are f- weird. Like, let's be real. Do you not think? She can be weird, but we can't blame her youth. I'm so sorry. She's not 18. She knows better than to randomly go cult on. She's Do not have the this only child. But other black woman in the office and is trying to warn a fellow black woman. I was the girl black. And saying, fight the power. Is Abby black? We don't know. But could be. I'm saying, could be a fellow Abby black does not person. sound black. Why not? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Abby does yeah. not sound black at all. To go to another black woman and say, don't have this kid. No, come you'll on. Die. I feel like. No, I'm sorry. There's no way a white woman can go up to a black woman and say, don't have this child because <laughs> they're four times more likely yeah, to die. Yeah. A white woman would say that to a black pregnant woman. I feel like I, I, I accept yeah. that more from America, especially if she grew up in one of those. Um, I can see a are... black woman saying it to another black woman in like a in like a uh, and if a black woman in a caring sort of way. You to just ex- be a bit more careful when going to these checkups. But she stuff. didn't say it in that way. No, but like I'm not talking about Abby in this instance. I'm just saying, like I can imagine a black <coughs> woman saying it to another black woman, but a white woman to say that to a black woman, I think, is wild. Oh, as in like just giving her the facts about childbirth. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you That's on why that. Maybe Abby, I think, could be black. Shall I tell you what doctors did to me when Idris was born? Yeah. It was really scary. What did they do? So when Idris was born, he was like. We took him home and basically when I first gave birth, yeah, okay, it, there's a lot that goes into this. So basically, you know when you have all your mid- midwife appointments, I, when you have your first baby, I thought you always had the same midwife, but you don't. There's a shortage of midwives in the community, so you have an appointment with a different midwife all the time, especially if you live like in inner city London. Mm. But if you like live in rural, er- not rural, but like if you live outside of London, like Slough, you might have the privilege of having like the same midwife. Anyway, so I always had all these different midwives. So then when I gave birth, I had no one to really show me how to breastfeed and do all these things. So then when I gave birth, they sent me home after like five hours. Wait, they, the midwife didn't come in and show you? She showed me a little bit, mm. but not a lot. Not when we first had him, mm. right? So we had him, we got home. I was like, fine, I know how to do this. Just stick them on the boob and that's it. But I thought he was breastfeeding all that time. He wasn't. So like I was like milking, oh my God, milking a boob is so painful, by the way. So I was like milking my boob to get like the colostrum out. Colostrum is like the yellow substance they need to begin with. Yeah. To get some energy, blah, 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 read about it. Anyway, so I was trying to get the colostrum out and squeeze my tit out, nothing was really coming out, but I just kept putting him on, but he was latching on, so I thought, yeah, he's drinking milk. Was Three he su- days was later, he like suckling? He was sucking, it all seemed like it, but also he was tongue tied, that was the other problem that I had that I didn't know about. Anyway, so three days later, this boy goes yellow, like his eyes are yellow, he's got neonatal jaundice, which is very common, but like his eyes are yellow, his body's gone yellow, and I'm like, this doesn't look right. So I call up the nurse and I'm like, listen, I think he's got jaundice, like what the hell? And I didn't know about neonatal jaundice, and I thought if he had jaundice, it's like this big serious thing, and like, that's it, right? So she was like, oh no, just bring him in. We'll stick him under the UV light. He'll be fine in two days. What? So they stick him under a UV honestly, light? Honestly, guys, so blase. Yeah. This is really so weird. So blase. So then we go to A&E. Like he's going for a little tan. When he's Literally, the it was so crazy, guys. It makes no sense. So I was like, so that's all he needs? And she was like, yeah. And then he'll be fine in like two, two three days. And I'll be honest, neonatal jaundice is very common because I read about it while I was in Do the Do they A&E. actually go like bright yellow, like Homer Simpson? Not, no, 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 no. Like he's he's a black child. So like he'll, his skin is like a hue of yellow, but you can see it in his eyes oh. and his like fingers and things like that. Anyway, so we go to A&E and um, what happens? So I'm like panicking, figuring out what neonatal jaundice is. I'm like, and imagine I've just given birth I'm really depleted emotionally, yeah, but I'm like trying to keep this together, right? So in my head, inside, I'm like, I'm such a fucking failure. Aww. Three days in, what's happened? Yeah. Anyway, so he goes under the UV light and like, 
they were like, oh, so you got to stay the night over. So we thought after one night, it'll be fine, he'll be okay. So the UV light wasn't working. Wow. So they were like, you've got to stay another oh week. Oh my God, what do you mean the UV light wasn't working? The UV light wasn't working, he wasn't feeling properly. As in like they had him under there for hours and it just wasn't So the wasn't UV light warm. is like this little tray and then like this, it's like a tanning bed for kids, honestly. And then you put these little things on his eyes. He had goggles and, like, on, there's a, a newborn baby. No, it wasn't goggles, but it's this thing to cover his eyes. And like, obviously he's a newborn, he's not gonna keep it on. Oh, it was just no. hell. That's very chaotic. It was and your mum was sitting with me for a bit. It was actually hilarious, but oh. I'll tell you what happened. So then after that, so we were there for like four days. Now he's getting a bit better. So then like they do a blood test on him to check um, if the, bilirubin which is what increases to create the, if the bilirubin increases in his liver i believe that's what creates the neonatal jaundice because he's not secreting urine properly because mm. obviously he's not drinking milk from me right mm. so the lady's trying to help me breastfeed and he's not drinking from me so she's trying to put him on a bottle and i'm like it's my first baby so i'm like no i'm not having a bottle i need to breastfeed da, da, da. she was like well there's nothing coming out your tits so you've got to do it <laughs> and i'm like no i've got to breastfeed in the end the breastfeeding worked so he was breastfeeding, we were there, he was still under the UV light, he was getting better, he was doing urine. And then they so take- So can I just ask, does, is the UV light so that he can get his, are they just tanning him so he can get his color back? So he's trying to get, he's trying, I think the UV light is to get vitamin D, I believe, or something oh, like that, to create, to get rid of the bilirubin in the pancreas or the liver. Any neonatal nurses listening, please correct me. But yeah, I think that's what it is, I don't know. Okay. But what they need is for the bilirubin to go down, for him to secrete to more pee, urine yeah. and then he gets rid of all the bilirubin in his urine and then like his color comes back and then everything else can function. Anyway, he was functioning. Then they're like, let's take his blood to figure out if, um, I don't know what they were trying to figure out, but they were like, let's figure out something to do with his blood, yeah. So bear in mind, this boy's drinking now. He's going to the toy and he's like weeing in his nappy. He's still using the UV light. So then they come back with his blood test results and they're like, and your mum was there, I still remember the state. And, she and they came back, they were really scared and they were like, basically his blood is like thinning. Um, so we need to take him to ICU. What? Like NICU. The little boy who's peeing and is getting better. Everything. And, and very milk. Mind. Pause, pause. So when they were taking his blood, yeah, they take it from the foot and it, and it was just, um, it was normal, like he, his, the moment they pricked him, like his skin healed, like the blood in the bottle looked normal. There was nothing to say that it was like watery or whatever. Was he, he's awake, he's not sleeping or anything at this point. No, he's fine, like he's just a newborn baby. And they say take him to ICU. So they're like, they come back and they're like, this blood result is basically saying that your baby's blood is really thin. That's what they said to me, they didn't explain it properly. So they were like, we need to take him to NICU and get him a blood transfusion. Excuse like, look me? how it went from normal <laughs> to this extreme. So me and your mom are sitting there like, huh, like what are you talking about? Have we you got the wrong the test results? Yeah, I was that? like, are you sure? Um, are you sure? Cause I was like, I was watching when they were taking his blood and his blood was fine. It wasn't, it, no, it wasn't thin, sorry. His, they were saying his blood was thick. Right. Sorry, forgive me, story, let's recap. So they were saying his blood was thick and they need to give him thinners in NICU to make his blood run normal. Mm. So when I was saying to them, I was like, well, when you guys took his blood, his blood was fine, like it was running, it was liquid, like it wasn't thick. So then I'm like, no, this doesn't make sense. And this is why you should trust your gut as a mom, I swear to God, yeah. So you've got the <sighs> test results now, and then a woman has just appeared. So a doctor and a midwife came to me and explained the results to me. And that's when you were like, what the fuck? I was like, I don't, I was, and then I said to him, I don't believe this. Cause I was like, I was there when he took his blood mm. and his blood wasn't thin. So can you show me what the blood bottle looks like? Cause I'm not gonna just give you my newborn and take him to NICU. Mm -hmm. And then the doctor left and he was like, he left and he was like, let speak to the midwife. And essentially the conversation was, you guys convince her. So the doctors called these midwives and said, convince her to so take, that we can take her baby away. To, to take her baby to NICU, to give him blood thinners, to, because he was just like, I can't be asked right now, do you get it? But not in a mean way. That's he was just, like busy. He was busy. So then this midwife comes back and she's like, you can't delay this any longer. It's your baby's health. You need to think about it, da, 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 all this stuff, yeah? And at this point, I haven't slept for like a whole week. I'm very emotional. She's being really rude to me. Yeah. Like very, like there was no empathy whatsoever. She's like, we need so to So then I'm baby. like, I literally just looked at her and said, you're not gonna take my f 
Baby, you need to show me the blood test result that you had and the vial, and then I will believe you. You can't just randomly say, I've done his results, like, and something's happened. Wait, so at this point, they haven't showed you any no. blood test results? They've just showed me the results to say Billa Rubin, whatever, but they haven't, like, they're just explaining things in a non but were they, you know when, way. You know when they said his blood is thick? Yeah, I was like, were show they, me the bottle. Were they reading from something when they said no. this? No. So they just came up to Yeah, you. they were like, we got his results. No evidence. So I was like, show me the bottle. I was like, what? That doesn't make sense. I was there when you took his blood. And I'm like, fine, I do mental health nursing, but surely I know what blood thick, thick blood looks like. It would be gloopy. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, so I was like very adamant. I was like, at least show me what the bowl looks like. Explain it to me properly. You can't just come here and tell me I'm gonna take your baby. Yeah. Anyway, she was like, let's take you to NICU first. And then, and then we can we can talk about it to one of the registrars over there. Mm. So then I was like, fine. So me, how about Ian and Idris go together? I'm very adamant now. I'm like, I'm in mama bear mode, yeah? yeah. So then we go to NICU and then, and I, and then I said to one of the, um, matrons or whatever I was like I don't want this midwife on my case because she was really rude to me she was very like verbally she was just very unempathetic and she could tell I was crying I was very tearful and you know like when women give birth they've got something called baby blues at last stage that could really put you into psychosis other midwives were really nice anyway I was crying I was tearful but I was like I've got to hold it together anyway so we get to the NICU right mm -hmm. And then I'm like to Hawaiian, you wait with Idris, make sure they don't take him. <laughs> make sure they don't take my baby. <laughs> she was like, you go talk to them, yeah? <laughs> so then I go speak to the registrar and I'm like, listen, I don't understand what you mean by my child has thick blood. I was like, go and test him now. Prick his foot, you'll see his blood is running fine. I was like, I'm not going crazy. I'm telling you I'm right, yeah? So she was like, okay, just, to, just for your peace of mind, I'm gonna do the test again. She pricks his foot, his blood is fine. She was like, oh. And then I'm like, oh, I told God. you. And she goes, okay, let's take his blood properly. So she takes his blood. She was like, I will make sure that I go to the blood place. So whose results did they read out to you? Let me tell you. <laughs> So she goes, I will make sure that this goes to the um, place that they examine bloods. I will take it myself. Cause I was like, I don't trust you. Also, the nurse that was um, giving me the information beforehand said to one of the doctors, that I was paranoid. So then when That's the registrar cheap. takes so the sorry. blood, right? She comes back with the results in like two hours. The results are fine. Your baby's fine. Yeah, so I went livid. This time my husband came. I was like, I'm not having this. I was like, where's that nurse and where's that doctor? I'm Where is she bring her to me now? I was like, I'm finally complaining. I said, what happened? I was like, you guys were gonna give my child blood thinners and he could have died if I didn't fight for him. So what did she say? And if I wasn't, and imagine if this was any mum, yeah, that didn't speak English Who properly. Who had a language barrier. A language barrier. From a disadvantaged background. Anything had a disability, they weren't able to speak properly. They would have killed their child. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, I was like, I need to know what you guys did wrong. They're panicking, running around, figuring it out. Did that woman apologize to and you? No, she didn't. In the end, she left, the sh she left for their shift that night, right? Oh. So then in the end, the night doctor came and explained the situation. They mixed two bottles, two babies' bottles <gasps> with my child with another child. Isn't that mad? That is so dangerous. Right? And they didn't. And they didn't even apologize to me in the end. I was just like, in the end, I was like, I don't what, feel safe. What did here. they say? What did they say? How can they not apologize? No, the, one of the matrons came up and obviously said sorry that this happened. But like the people involved who didn't believe me and made me out to be paranoid, didn't apologize to me. Anyway, in the end, I was already like aggravated. And when I heard that my baby was fine, I was like, I want to discharge myself. I hope you wrote a long oh, I did, I did, I did. three page oh. email to CQC <laughs> because bloody hell, that is so scary. I know. So when they tell you that black women are four times more likely to die, that's probably true, and their babies, because they don't fucking listen to you. And then she kept like, I remember she kept questioning me and she was like, I know you're a nurse, but you need to just relax and listen to us. We know what we're doing. What are you talking about? I was just like, you don't come to someone, give them these test results, say you're gonna go somewhere and not explain things properly. Anyway, it just really, it really ruined things for me. So when I had my second baby, I made sure I was like, I'm Ain't nobody, I need to see every single test result. <laughs> give me the book. I'm reading it for myself. You know, when they give you the little yeah. notes and stuff. Now, honestly, that's so yeah. scary, Hother. Imagine like you just decided, imagine you didn't go with your intuition in that moment. 
I know. And you know what was so crazy, guys? I think about it now, honestly, I could cry. It was like three, it was like, it, it all happened in the space of like 12, 24 hours. And on top of that, it's And like, they kept saying to me, they're gonna call social services on me because I'm like delaying my child's care. I was like, I'm not delaying anything. All I need is for you to prove to me, like, you can't just say my, I was like, look at his blood. And then the worst thing was, I was like, okay, if you think I'm going crazy, just test his blood now. Yeah. Like the other registrar did, like it wasn't a problem. Yeah. But it was the fact that they were gaslighting me, making me feel like I was, like I didn't know what I was talking about. And the fact that she said I was paranoid, that kicked me off. I was like, I'm not paranoid. Bitch. I assume. I know. You know, on top of that, you know what, like, is really sad is the fact that you are in that moment feeling quite like emotional, vulnerable. I was so tearful, and the and the saddest thing is, like, I, you know, when it's like, I don't know how to explain it to you guys. Like, now that I've had children, I'm a bit more open with my emotions. Mm. Of like, I'll just cry. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's okay for me now. But back then, I was like 24 years old. Like, what is crying? On? I've never had any mental health problems. Alhamdulillah, at that point. So to feel just like, honestly, the plague of those three days, I remember it, like the anxiety, I was in my head, oh. I was tearful, I was emotional, I was so low. Yeah. And then like, you just have to think like you can't, you're already in this shit situation, like mentally. No, I'm so glad. And you you've got to be strong for your kid. I'm it's so just glad that you, should, you stood up for yourselves because like there's a weird little power dynamic between doctors and patients, nurses and patients. Do you know what I mean? Like they just think they know everything. And no, and it's like it you know it's like it's it happens more with like people from disadvantaged backgrounds because like they they can't advocate for themselves as well as like say their white counterparts. Any mum, although it could have been anyone, like yeah, Alhamdulillah, it was you that like I was told like, them I'm they're wrong. I'm not anyone it. else, my mum probably would have gone there and said, okay, fine. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? And it would have made their child worse. It would have probably killed their child. It was crazy. Like, this is what happens when you're not, like, meticulously checking. Like, when you're not doing your job properly, when you're, okay, like, underpaid and underfunded, maybe we can blame this could be, like, a governmental issue. I've never spoken to someone like that. I don't, like, if I, and especially in mental health, it's very sticky. Like, I would never, ever speak to a patient and their family the way that woman spoke to me. Like, mm, it's so it degrading. Really it was very much like, I know what I'm telling you. It was just, I felt gaslit. And then at one point I was like, maybe I am doing something wrong. And I was like, no, I was like, just check his blood. I'm not going crazy. Yeah. I was even sitting with your mom and I was like, and I, I was speaking to my husband on the phone. And I was like, bruv, like we both saw him taking his blood. Like it was fine. Yeah. But why, what, why did it take so long for you to you just know, check his leg and prick his leg? What I don't understand, I just don't get, like how can someone come to you with information and there's no like, paperwork to, to like, no they probably had it. paperwork they probably had paperwork but it was like for the wrong child but it was for the at... wrong child but like the thing that aggravated me more was oh, they so there was been... no way that they could have known unless they did another exactly test. and they wouldn't do the test that's what i'm saying oh. they were like you just have to believe us and i was like i'm not going to because i saw my child's blood it was fine it was it was like mine yeah i was like all you have to do for my peace of mind I'm a mum, I'm a test. new mum. Just do the test. It's not gonna do anything. He's a newborn. Shit. But yeah. Because I thought it was like, if it was a simple case of them having to go back and check notes, be like, oh shit, it's the wrong child. Sorry. Like, But that's what they did afterwards when they realised that what, his blood was fine. But their whole thing was, we don't want to do another test. Like, we don't want to take yeah, the time like, to, I know to what go I'm out doing. of my way to do another test because the test is like, 100% certain. Is that arrogance of saying, I know more than you because I am the doctor or I am this person of power yeah. and I will basically, um, I'm telling you what to do, you need to listen to it otherwise. Like, and even to threaten me with social services. A new, a, a, a new mum. Guys, this That's is just so a crazy. PSA to say, always go with your intuition. Don't ever see doctors or nurses as being powerful than your intuition. No. Trust your gut always. And if you fine. think they're making a bad decision, question them and don't stop. Because literally it could be that decision that you make in that moment, it could be life death situation. Honestly, I'm now he's six years old, so. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, all of that is so scary. I know. Imagine like people listen, this might be people listening to this who are like mums who have gone through similar things before where they thought, oh shit, like the doctor's trying to tell me something different. 
Yeah, I mean, bias is crazy. Bias is crazy, but the data speaks for itself. Mm. Indeed. So you know what, Abby? Kudos to you. That is the end of our episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please make sure that you support our YouTube and you support the podcast by leaving us a lovely review. Tell us what you think. Did you like the episode? Are we boring? Or what is it? Something wrong with us today. And don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon, guys. We love you. (laughs) 